What If Season 2 Episode 4 Thoughts. This episode is called What If Iron Man Crashed Into the Grand Master. So, yeah, um, as one can guess, this is this was meant to be a Season 1 episode. I heard about, I forget the detail, I think they ran out of time to, to properly animate, which you can understand, there's a lot of complex animation in this episode. This was meant to air along with the rest of season one. That's why Gamora is the only one where we you know, we see her recruited at the end of season one. And it's like, we haven't actually had an episode for her. And yeah, so this is Tony at the very end of Avengers 1. And and yeah, you know, the 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 way it is in the movie with the, the wormhole, uh, yeah, the portal closing right before... You know, it was very fortunate that he just barely made it in time. You could see how somewhere else in the multiverse he didn't get there in time. And, yeah, we learned that he's actually really popular. They've been seeing on the news him defeating the... Yeah, uh, Chitorinos. And, yeah, some fun stuff with... Grandmaster testing out different names for Tony, and the melty stick is demonstrated, so Tony plays ball. It felt a little weird to me that suddenly the he just has the thing on, on his neck that, you know, the, the zappy thing when that was, yeah, I don't know, it just, it suddenly just was there. I get that they would have put it on there. It just the fact that we didn't see it felt a little yeah. Some very cool race action in this episode. Honestly, if they don't make a tie in licensed racing game based on this, I really think that would be like it's probably gonna suck. Certainly the one for Phantom Menace did, but it's you know, you're you're printing money at that point. And <laughs> I like Korg running with the car around him. So Tony apparently already had something at least very similar to the suit that he has the prototype of in Iron Man 1. I mean, they are, you know, they're close, and it would be really weird if he already had the nano suit. And, yeah, Gamora... First seems to save Tony, but it's just so that she can be the one to kill him. And yeah, good fight between the two of them. And they get yeah, they get sent off to the room and you know, it's like, oh, we thought you'd want to talk. Why is he here? Yeah, some a lot of really funny quirk stuff throughout this entire episode. I quite like the, the, you know, I'm not staying here to fight in Dr. Moreau's Hunger Games. I'm not 100% certain if the movie had come out by this point, but certainly the book was out. He probably listens to, to audiobooks in the suit to drown out Jarvis' snark. And, yeah, you know, now wait for my signal. He just goes immediately. He's as bad at that as, as Groot is. Now I know what you're thinking. Where is our food? Why did that lake turn to blood? Wow. I like Tony calling Gamora Xena. <laughs> I had to be his his paperweight. Can you imagine? Paper, my nemesis. And let's see that we have the um, Yeah, some fun with the the jail escape. I like that here Gamora actually does take the name murderess. You know, that's like she seemed ashamed of being called that by Drax in Guardians 1, but that was after she betrayed Thanos. This is before, so I guess that just was her title. And yeah, very fun with the, you know, it's a, if it's a race story, obviously there's going to be like, a, okay, I'll race you. I'm, because I'm the protagonist, you're the antagonist, and I wager, you know, I offer up this 
but if you lose, I get to take this. You know, just it's very, very classic. Just yeah, and and you know, Topaz is like, there's no reason for you to agree to, to this. This is he has no leverage. You have all the leverage. And then we have the yeah, I Korg asked them to to walk very slowly with him. That was. So so it looks like a slow mo walk, and then they suddenly just snap back out of it. Very fun. Well, call me Spartacus. That's a chariot. And I like Topaz is going. We. And the Iron Man suit forms into a car. That's yeah. And. I appreciate that throughout this episode, Tony really believes that Gamora can be redeemed. You know, he really, he does see a lot of himself in her. And, let's see. Yeah, Gam Gamora does make the decision to save Tony. And Tony wins, though the, you know, Grandmaster, of course, is going to try to cheat his way out of it. But the melting stick lands at him. Honestly, at first it looked like Valkyrie or Val was self-sacrificing, but I guess she did survive it. And the <laughs> I like that Tony hates all the drinks on the planet. One, just one drink that doesn't taste like a carnival fairground urinal. And <laughs> And, and yeah, when Tony says he misses Pepper, Korg is like, I'm more of a salt man. I know, dangerous, but isn't love always? And yeah, the Gamora agreed to, to help take out Thanos and melts him. So maybe, the, the, yeah, the fact, if this episode had aired in season one, that would make two episodes, because there was also one where Ultron did it, where one of the major characters of an MCU movie just easily takes out Thanos, just in a matter of seconds. And then we get the, the post credit scene where Grandmaster asks for a mop and a bucket for this wet-ass GM. So yeah, this was a very, very fun episode. Um... Yeah, I, I don't have a lot to add. Um, right, uh, yes, uh, so not specifically about this episode, but I heard that the the um, the actor who did the Werner Herzog, yeah, Werner Herzog impersonation in the, the episode right before this one was that guy who also does the... You know, he he voices several, like, villains that, where the, the actor didn't want to reprise the role. So, in, in these what-ifs, you know, he... he oh, right, and also, not only what-ifs. He, he does Red Skull, he does Ultron, you know, those two actors didn't really want to return. He did Werner Herzog, you know, it's it's really, really cool that they have this... that they found this guy who in addition to being really great at impersonations is also actually a talented actor because usually when you have someone who can do impersonations they're not the best actor and there's a lot of real, very talented actors who are not super good at impersonation 